أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم ما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبح لله ما في السماوات والارض وهو العزيز الحكيم له ملك السماوات والارض يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير هو الاول والاخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي now we are at the most important part of quran as i feel for the muslim ummah of today the muslim ummah in decay and degradation for them these ten surahs are the most important part of the quran this is the biggest group of the madani surahs as regards the number ten madani surahs at one place سورة الحديد سورة المجادلة سورة الحشف سورة الممتحنة سورة الصف سورة الجمعة سورة المنافقون سورة التغابن سورة الطلاق سورة التحريم 10 although all these ten go to make nearly one and a quarter of the parts of quran in the beginning we have four al baqara al imran and nisa al baida but regarding the volume they cover more than six parts of the quran but regarding the number of the surahs this is the biggest group the biggest flower pot of the badri surahs in the quran there are certain features which are common to these ten surahs number 1 nearly ha- all of them except one only and that is surah al-hashr all the nine surahs were revealed in the later half period of the stay of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in madina madani period 10 years divide them into 2 5 plus 5 so all these surahs except surah al-hashr they were revealed in the later 5 years period number 2 there is not neither any address nor even reference to the mushrikeen of arabia in these surahs the idolater idol worships the associators the pagan people of arabian peninsula no reference all the address is to the muslims only there are references to the people of the book as a sign as a warning o muslims now you occupy that position in this world which was occupied by the former muslim ummah the bani israil for 2000 long years but then they were removed from this position why these were the weaknesses which came in them and the same are showing 
their faces in you also. Although they are very in a very primitive stage, but all those weaknesses are showing up. So beware. Try to rectify the conditions. That is why in these surahs we find that addressing the Muslims a sort of rebuke, a sort of, you know, saying you are not doing this. Why you are not doing this? This type you will find very commonly. Then the main subjects of the Quran, which are detailed, which are discussed in detail in the Makki Suras and the long Madani Suras. In these Suras we have summaries of those subjects. Small. Iman. Iman is the main subject of the Makki Suras. But here Surat al 18 Ayat. A complete summary. Nifaq is one of the main subjects of the Madani Suras. Surat al-Nisa, Surat al-Tawbah, Surat al-Azab, Surat al-Muhammad. But here you have one surah of eleven ayat, Surat al-Munafiqoon, most comprehensive regarding what are the reasons of this disease, etiology, as they call it in medical terminology, what are the symptoms, what is the prognosis, what is the preventive steps that can be taken? And what is the treatment? All these subjects in one surah of 11 ayat. Then the purpose of the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described at many places. But the most comprehensive is surah to saf included in this collection. In this way, the summaries of all the important subjects of Quran, the main themes of Quran, you will find in this one part, as volume is one part, one and a quarter. So to say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to cater to the need of those people also who don't work very hard. So they need summaries, you know, just like some students, they need some khulasas you know, and summaries and so on to get through the examinations. So even if these ten surahs we can understand, I think it will suffice. Now five of these surahs start with Sabbaha lillah or Yusabbihu lillah, with the mention of the fact that everything in this universe is glorifying Allah. They are called Al-Musabbihat. And they have a special importance in this group. Five Al-Musabbihat. Surah Al-Hadith, Surah Al-Hashr, Surah Al-Saf, Surah Al-Jum'ah, Surah Al-Ta'abun. The rest five start directly. And the first surah, that is Surah Al-Hadid, which we shall, we shall shortly be reading, is so to say the Ummul Musabbihat, the subject matter of all the Musabbihat, in a nutshell, that is in Surah Al-Hadid. So I can't give you what I feel actually in my heart, the importance, the grandeur, the majesty of this Surah, Surah Al-Hadid. I don't have words to express myself. And I feel I'm very lucky even that at a very early age Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala produced in my heart a special liking for this surah. So much so that sometimes I dare say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me this surah. That is, He has given me a very deep insight into this surah a deep understanding of this surah, Al-Mubarakah. 
Now we start. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Subhanallah, ma fi samawati wal lard. Everything that is in the heavens and the earth glorifies Allah. Wa huwa al-Aziz al-Hakim, and He is the Mighty, all-powerful, and the Wise. Having all the wisdom. What's the meaning of tasbih? Sabah yasbah means to float. Floating in water, keeping at the surface, not going down. Floating in the space, keeping its level. Kullun fi falakin yasbahun. Sabah yasbah means to keep something afloat. Don't let it go down. To keep Allah afloat, what does it mean? Don't attach any concept with Him which is not becoming for Him. Any weakness? No. Any shortcoming? No. Any need? No. This affirmation of this fact. He is above all defects, above all weaknesses, above all shortcomings, above all mistakes. When you affirm this, this is tasbih. And when you say, he has all the good things in him, that is, hamd or tahmeed. Tasmih, tahmeed. Tasmih is a negative concept. He is above all these shortcomings and weaknesses, mistakes, nothing. But he has all the high attributes at the highest level. This is hamd. Yusabbihuna bihamdihi. At many places we have read, especially in Surah Bani Israel, وَإِن مِّن شَيْنِ اللَّهِ يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَاكِ اللَّهِ تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِحَهُمْ There is not a single thing in the whole universe which is not glorifying Allah with praise. But you can't understand their glorification. But one way we can understand, what is it? This universe is glorifying Allah by its presence. See to me, is there any defect in me? No. So who is free from the defect? The one who created me. I have nothing. A painter has painted something. If it is very beautiful, praise goes to whom? To the painting or the painter? So this is the work of Allah, this universe. And by its very Existence, everything is testifying that my creator, my planner, my fashioner is above all weaknesses, complete in all respect. This is the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which everything is doing. Then there can be, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a tongue to everything, of its own. As we have read in Surah Hamim Saita, Antakallahu ladhi antakakulla shay. Our skills will say that now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us speak also, as He has made everything speak. So maybe they have some their own tongues and they glorify also, which we can't understand. But that aspect is understandable. Secondly, please note in this group of surahs, these two names of Allah, Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim. They are repeated, mostly repeated, mostly repeated. Why? They go to give you a complete concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding the sovereign of this universe. The sovereign must have total authority. No limits or boundaries on its authority. And number two, we know in this world, that wherever there is some authority, there is a tendency to corruption. Authority 
tends to corrupt. And absolute authority corrupts absolutely. But here, Allah has all the authority, but at the same time, He has all the wisdom. So His authority is used with wisdom. This is the balancing factor for the total authority. No outside limitations, no checks and balances from outside. But his own wisdom keeps his authority on the correct line. And this is the concept, the political concept. Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim. Lahu mulku samawati wal To him belongs the sovereignty. Now note this word. The concept of Islam as a deen, as a total system of life. And the highest manifestation of that is the concept of state. All this social structure, you know, it has evolved. And then the highest evolved form of the organized society is the state. Islam is a state. It wants to establish a state of its own. It doesn't want to live underneath any other sovereignty. Oh, no, no. Al-Haqqo yalu wa la yu'na The truth has the right to dominate, not to be dominated. Lahu mulku samawati wal lard. To him belongs the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth. You're here you meet. He keeps you alive, he gives you life. And he makes you die. Bahu ala kulli shayin qadeem. And he is powerful over everything, everything. He is the first and the last and the most manifest and the most hidden. These are four names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the only place in the whole of Quran where you find this vow between the names. Nowhere, other. Nowhere in the Quran, nowhere else. Even eight names are mentioned in Surah Al-Hashr. Al-Malik Al-Quddus Al-Salam Al-Mumin Al-Muhaymin Al-Aziz Al-Jabbar Al-Mutakabbir. No vow in between. No end. Why? Because all these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are present in His person simultaneously. But here, this is the only place. Awwalo wal akhiro wal zahiro wal baathin. Why? Because awwal and akhir can't exist simultaneously. There must be a time gap. Awwal, akhir. Some gap. When there was nothing, he was there. And there will be nothing, and he will be there. So he is the awwal of the creation. And he will be the last of the creation. Creation was not there. He was there. Creation will not be there. He will be there. So he is the beginning and the end of this creation. And between this beginning and end, this universe, this universe has two aspects. Inner aspect, outer aspect. And for, from the angle of the outer aspect, he is the most manifest. And from the inner aspect, is he is the most hidden. Nobody can know him. But he is everywhere. Nahnu akramu ilayhi min hamlil warid. We read in Surah Qaf. He is so manifest. All this creation is a manifestation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is so evident. So manifest, but he is absolutely hidden. Nobody can know him, know his person. We know him only through his attributes, his sifat, his names, not his person. Wahua bi kulli shayin alim, and he knows everything. Now note these two attributes are most important. Huwa ala kulli shayin qadir, huwa be kulli shayin alim. Power over everything, 
knowledge of everything. Omnipotent, omniscient. Out of the attributes of Allah, they are the most fundamental attributes. It is He who created the heavens and the earth in six days or six cycles of time or six periods of time. So Mustafa al then he mounted on the throne of power and glory. He knows whatever enters the earth. Each drop of rain entering, he knows it. Whatever comes out of it, he knows. Whatever is coming down from the heaven, he knows. Whatever is going up into the heaven, he knows. The angels going up. He is with you wherever you are. We can't imagine how. And we shouldn't try to understand it how. The how we should keep separate. But he is. That is must. Wherever you are, he is with you. Now these philosophical questions, you know, led to the discussions. You might have heard these things. Vahdatul Shahood and Vahdatul Wujud. Very highly technical discourses. Scholastic discussions. I don't want to even refer to these things. But this is the most important place of Quran regarding this. I have an Urdu that's of Surah Al Hadid comprising 15 hours, 29 ayat, 15 hours. But those who feel interested, they can listen to it. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna basir. When he is with you wherever you are, so he is seeing for himself everything you, you are doing. When he is with you wherever you are, so he is the direct witness. Lahu mulku samawati wal Now note, why repeating this again? This is the most important concept. To him belongs the sovereignty of the universe and the earth. When people is make Islam a religion in the usual sense of the word, this concept of sovereignty of Allah goes off. Pray and fast and this and diet and then and hajj and umrah, that's all. Deen is complete. And all the matters will be made to return to him. He merges the night into the day. He merges the day into the night. And he knows whatever is in the hearts and chests of the people. These six ayat, let me say, I again have to admit that I don't have words to express what impression I have in my heart at what highest level of consciousness and philosophical discourse this person and attributes of Allah has been discussed in these six ayat. And this is regarding this, the person and the attributes of Allah. This is the most important, most important, most important ayat, sixth ayat of Surah Al-Hadith. Now this is as it is. Allah is there. Universe belongs to Him. He is the Creator. He is the Sovereign. What should you do? What does He demand from you? Aminu billahi wa Number one, have belief in Allah and His Messenger. وَأَنْفِقُوا مِنْ مَا جَعَلَكُمْ مُسْتَخْلَفِينَ فِيهِ And expend from whatsoever He has given you wise regency over it for His player. Whatever He has given you. He has given you this hand, use it for Allah. I am the wise student on my body. 
I'm Khalifa. Mustakhla fi na fi. Allah has given me something. And He has given me, He has made me much vice I can use as like. But to keep its use for Allah, all the faculties that Allah has given me, all the capabilities that Allah has bestowed upon me, all the belongings that Allah has given me, expend them, expend them, expend them. Two words, Aminu al fiqu Aminu al fiqu Aminu al fiqu Note these two words. They will be repeated and repeated and repeated in all these ten surahs. Have belief as you should have belief. It should reach the level of conviction and expand in the way of Allah. فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَأَنْفَقُوا The same two things repeated. So who amongst you believe and spend? لَهُ مَجْرُونَ كَبِيرٌ For them is a very great reward. And now is coming the rebuke, as I told you. وَمَا لَكُمْ لَا تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ What has happened to you? You don't have faith in Allah. Who are being addressed? The companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Because the, among the companions, there were all types of people. The Muhajireen who had passed through hardships, sacrifices, all types of tests and tribulations. Then you know, Asabiqun Abaluna Min Al Ansar, the early Ansars of Medina. But now every day, new people are coming and entering the fold of Islam. As we read, Qalatil Arabu Amanna, they also say, we, 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 we claim we are Mu'min. No, 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 you are not Mu'min, you are only Muslims. So what has happened? The average has decreased. Previously, number of Muslims was small, but the intensity of Iman was great. So the average level was high. Now the number is great. But the intensity in the newcomers is not that much. So the average has gone down. And now we are living in an era when this average has reached nearly zero. Do we have Iman? This is the biggest misunderstanding. Very few, very few of the Muslims of today have Iman. They have a creed, a racial creed. They have a dogma, not the conviction, not the iman in the heart, deep rooted in the heart. No. Quran says, "Wala tahinu, wala tahzanu, antumul alona in kuntum mu'mini." If you are true mu'min, you will be the uppermost. And we are today the lowermost. What's the logical result? We don't have Iman. But however, we have is a shadow of Iman. A legal shadow. And I say, I believe. Okay, then you are a Muslim. That's all. This is the condition of 99.9 .9 recurrent percent Muslims today. وَمَالَكُمْ لَا تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولَ يَدْعُوكُمْ لَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِرَبِّكُمْ And the messenger of Allah is calling you. Still he is present amongst you. Calling you that you should believe in your Lord. وَقَدْ أَخَدَ مِسَاقَكُمْ And he had already taken and extracted a covenant from you in Kuntum Mu'mineen, if you are believers. The covenant that you made before coming in this world, Alastu bi Rabbikum. And the second covenant you made, when you said, I believe. This belief is a sale purchase agreement between Allah and you. Inna Allah ashtara bil al-mu'mineen al-fusam wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al-jannah. You are under these two covenants. Now, after this rebuke, a guidance to 
the remedy. If you really, if you peep down into your hearts and you find, yes, there is vacuum type of thing. I don't have that Iman. Then where to go to get this Iman? هو الذي ينزل على عبده آيات بينات ليخرجكم من الظلمات إلى النور. It is he who is sending down on his bondsman, on his servant, Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. These enlightened and illuminating آيات revelations ليخرجكم so that he brings you out من الظلمات إلى النور from the darknesses into the light. You have the source material of Iman you have in your house, you have in your possession, and that is Quran. Only you have to read it, only you have to ponder over it, only you have to deep, dive deep into its meanings, that's all. You don't have to go to any caves or any woods or any far away from human society and everything, not no. wherever you are. Take this book, ponder over it, read it, dive deep into its meanings. It will stir in you that dormant consciousness which is already present in you, but it is dormant, inactive. It will be activated. هو الذي ينزل على عبده آيات بينات ليخرجكم من الظلمات إلى النور وإن الله بكم لرؤوف الرحيم very لي الله is for you very kind and very merciful and the biggest manifestation of his mercy is Quran الرحمن علم القرآن the manifestation of رحمانية of Allah is Quran now second there were two demands, the Aminu and al This is very systematic. The first rebuke, why don't you have faith? Now the second rebuke. What has happened to you? You don't want to spend in the way of Allah. You want to keep your money, your wealth. Why? What has happened to you? This is not demand. This doesn't become of a true moment. If he believes in the hereafter, he must deposit everything in the bank of the hereafter. Why is he depositing here? From the, where he has to go anyhow. Whether this wealth remains with you or not, but you have to depart from here. And you are keeping it here. It means you don't have, you don't really believe in the hereafter. Whatever you spend for the cause of Allah, it is deposited in the divine bank of the hereafter. وَمَا لَكُمْ أَلَّا تُنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ وَلِلَّهِ مِرَاسُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ The final inheritance of everything, all the heavens and the earth, will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will all vanish. What will remain? For whom? Who will be the inheritor? لا يستوي منكم من الفق من قبل الفتح. Very important point. Those of you are not equal to the others who spent before the victory and fought in the way of Allah. Now you know this, just as you know, if there is a flower bud, the petals are there but they are not visible. When it opens, now the petals become visible. In the same way, in the beginning was anfiqu only. Aminu billahi wa rasulihi wa anfiqu. Nimma jalakum mustakhla fi nafi. Now we found anfiqu fi sabil Allah. This infarct is for the cause of Allah. And now we found wa qatalu. Qital is also infarct. Spending your life for Allah is qital. انفاق مال انفاق جان بزل مال بزل جان so when it is was said انفقو ممار جالكم مستخلفين فيه potentially it contained in its 
the ketal also. Here it is opening. La yastavi min kuman al faqa min qabl al fath. Those of you who spent for the cause of Allah before victory and also fought for the cause of Allah, they are not equal to others. Ulaika azamu darajatum. They are much in the ranks of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are very high. Then those min al-lazeen anfaqoo bin ba'du wa qatalu who spent in the way of Allah, but after the victory, and they took part in the fighting in the cause of Allah, but after the victory. When Muslims were weak, whosoever was striving for Islam at that time, well, he has a very high position. Then, when Islam has become a power, now with the powerful, everybody wants to walk. So, the ranks are very different. وَكُلَّ وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْحُسْنَانَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised to all, very good. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ Whatever you are doing, Allah is aware of it. مَنْزَ الَّذِي يُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا Who is that courageous person who gives a goodly loan to Allah? Listen, Allah. To him belongs everything, and he is demanding loan. What does it mean? It's an appreciation. You spend something for me and my deen, so it's a loan to me. But to give loan to Allah, for that you need courage. Why? For that you have to have the belief and conviction. Conviction in the existence of Allah, conviction in the resurrection, Conviction in the hereafter, then only you can extend a loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not without these things. So, Manzal Lazi, this is a very challenging attitude, style. Kaun hota hai harife mai mard afghani ash isq hai mukarrar mere hai mukarrar lame saki pe salah mere baad. Who is who? Is who? مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا فَيُضَعِفَهُ لَهُ So Allah will keep on doubling it many folds. وَلَهُ عَجِبٌ كَرِيمٌ And in addition, there will be a very generous reward. Now, a scene is now being shown, the Day of Judgment. A certain stage is where people will have to cross, it seems, a bridge which we call in Urdu Pul Sirat. This As Sirat Al Mustaqeem Fid Dunya in this world, then it becomes As Sirat in the other world. And you have to pass over it. Underneath is the hell. Those who were considered Muslims in this world, those who were kuffar, their cases have already been decided. Gone with the wind. But those who were counted as Muslims, now they have to be screened. Who among them had real faith and who was a hypocrite? For that, you will be made to pass through over a bridge where is absolute darkness. But those who, who had real Iman, they will have light, light of Iman in their hearts. That torch will be showing them the, the passage. And because they have earned good deeds with the right, right hands, so there will be a light on the right side also. With this help, they will pass. But those who considered themselves Muslims, or they were considered Muslim by the others in this world, but they didn't have the real Iman, or real good deeds, they will have no light. So they will stagger and fall down. Yawma tar al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat The day when you will see the really believing Muslim men and really believing Muslim women. Nuruhum. Yas'a nuruhum. Their light will be running bayna aydihim in front of them. Wabayamanahim and to the right of them. Bushrakumul Yoma Jannat. 
it will be said to them, for you are the glad tidings today of the gardens, Tajri Mithate Ladhar, underneath which rivers are flowing, Khalidi Nafiha, and he will remain in those these gardens forever, forever. Zalikahu al Fazul Azim. And this is the great success. But what about the Munafiqeen? Yawma yakoonul munafiqoona wal munafiqato. On that day, the hypocrite men and women, they will say to the believers, لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُ انزُرُونَ Please wait for us. We don't have any light. Just imagine, if you are crossing some jungle during the night, and somebody has a torch, and he is going, you know, you say, just wait for me also. I don't have a torch. I should avail the light of your torch in the same way. When the believing men and women will be going, because they have the light. They are seeing the path. Then this Munafikun would say, Unzuruna naktabis bin nurekum. Wait for us so that we can also benefit and we borrow from your light. It will be said, Go back. This light was earned in that world, which is now past. Iman was earned over there. Good deeds were earned over there. This light has not been given here as a charity. It was earned in that world. If it is possible for you, go back to that world and try to earn. Try to get that light. In the meantime, a wall will be erected between the two. There will be a door also in that. In the inside of that wall will be the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hospitality for the people of Jannah will start. And the outside of it, before it, there will be the torment and the chastisement. Now they have been screened out of the Muslims. The really believing moments have passed and the hypocrites, they remain back. They will call to them. Were we not with you? He says, God, there, we are here. Why? We were there in, this, in the world. We were also Muslims. We were praying before Muhammad Wasallam in the mosque. Were we not? They will say, why not? They were with us. You were with us. وَلَاكِنَّكُمْ فَتَنْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ But you gave up yourself to the temptations of that life. More money, more position, more fame. Over indulgence in these things. You put yourself into that fitna. Fatantum anfusakum. With your own hands, you put yourself in that fitna. And then you started waiting what happens. Let us wait and see. To whom was the victory? To Muhammad and his companions? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa radiyallahu ta'ala anum? Or the enemies? Vartabtum. And then doubts started coming up into, into your hearts. And then your willful thinkings, false hopes, deluded you. Oh, Allah is merciful. Allah will forgive. Hatta Jamrullah. Until the final command of Allah came. Vagarrakum billahil gharoor. And definitely that ark deceit, Satan, he misguided you in the name of Allah and His mercy. 
Now you are one category. You and the kuffar. Mawakunar. For all of you, the permanent abode is fire. Hiya Mawlakum. She is your patron now. Mawlakum. Whatever you have to say, say to this fire. Yo dukshu karna ho isi se karo. Nobody else to listen to your moans and groans and lamenting. And it's a very bad and evil destination. Now, in these ayat, a very big question marks comes to us. There's a very beautiful couplet in Persian. Jane jumla ilm ha i nastubas. ई नस्त ई जाने जुमला इल्भा ई नस्त ई ताबेदानी मन के अम दरियों में दी द एसेंस ऑफ ऑल नॉलेज इज दिस ओनली दैट यू शुड बी एबल टू नो वेयर विल यू स्टैंड ऑन द डे ऑफ द जजमेंट इफ यू रेड बुक्स एंड तफासीर एंड अलादीस एंड फिका दिस बट You are not worried where you are. Where will you be placed on the day of the judgment? About which even Muhammad says, "Why Nadri? Why you follow me? Wala bekum? I don't know what will be done to me or to you. But we feel safe. Our salvation vouch saves. What to us?" All these threats are for the kufar, not for us. We are Muslims. If we are Muslims, we are Mormons. When we are Mormons, Jannah is going to be our abode. No, no question. But we must understand where do we stand. And then now a question: Alam yaani lil lazina manu an taqsha akulubhum lizikri Allah wa ma nadala min al haq. Has the time not come up till now for those who, prof who profess to believe that their hearts should humble for the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and for the truth that has been revealed? But I yakunu kal lazina butul kitaba min kabul. They should not be like those who were given the book before them. This is the reference of Yahud. I told you in the beginning, no address to Yahud, but a reference. Fatala alayhi mulamad. Then their period became lengthened or prolonged. Fakasat kulubuhum, and their hearts hardened. Wakasiru minhum fasikun, and most of them are transgressors. This hardening of the hearts about which in Surah Al-Baqarah we find. ثم قصت قلوبكم فهي كالحجارة أو شد قسوة. And then your hearts hardened, and now they have become as hard as stones, rather harder than the stones. This is the condition of the hearts of human beings when they are hardened. So, if you are alarmed, yes, this is time I. I mend my ways. This is the time I repent. This is the time I should turn sincerely to Allah and His Deen. Then, the ray of hope. Elamu, let this be known to you. An Allah yuhi lang tabad amatiha. Let Allah revive the land, earth, after its death. So, if your hearts have died. 
Allah can revive your hearts also. If you feel their, your hearts are barren regarding the crop of Iman, no, Allah can give you the crop. So don't be despaired. Don't be disappointed. Because if you are despaired and disappointed, then there is no possibility of mending and rectifying your ways. For that you need the courage and hope. So see, Allah revives the land, that land, after its death, it will revive your hearts also. But bayyanna lakumul ayat, laal lakum taakhilun. We have made clear our revelations to you so that you can understand and you ponder over it. But you have to plow, plow the land. The land is barren, you need two things, plow, sow the seed, wait for the rain. So, if your hearts are dead, if your hearts are barren, now you have to plow it. And what is the plowing of this land of heart? إِنَّ الْمُصَّدِّقِينَ وَالْمُصَّدِّقَاتِ وَأَقْرَضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا Verily those who gave, give arms for the pleasure of Allah, men and women, and those who give loan to their Lord, goodly loan, يُضَافُ لَهُمْ وَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَرِيمٌ It will be kept doubled for them. And there will be a very generous reward also, respectable reward also. This is the ploughing of the this land of heart. Get out from it, the love for wealth. The main disease is the love of this world. And the biggest manifestation of the love of this world is the love of wealth. Get it out, get it out, get it out. Now after this, when the impurities from this earth of your heart has been removed by plowing, now if you sow the seeds of Iman, and there we should read the understood words, Madazalik, not mentioned, Mahzuf, understood. If clearing your heart of the Love for wealth. After clearing your heart of the wealth, love of wealth, then you sow the seed of Iman. And now you will have the full harvest. Now they can go rise to the level of Siddiqeen. This is the highest level. Next to Ambiya. أُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ عَنَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالسِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ Now you can rise to Siddiqeen, وَالشُّهَدَاء You can be the witnesses of Allah on this earth. Living witnesses. Shaheed is not only the one who has given his life for the cause of Allah. A living Shaheed is the witness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you here among the Christians, Jehovah's witnesses? This is the correct word, witnesses. Whosoever practices the deen of Allah is by his very practice a witness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lahum ajruhum wa nuruhum. For them there will be their reward and the light. They will get the light which will be, which will show you the path on the, that day and you will be able to cross that as-sirat. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا As for those who reject and belie our revelations, أُولَائِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَحِيمُ They are the people of the fire, dwellers of the fire. أَيْلَمُوا Now in a few ayat, this, now the crux of the matter is this world or that world? Which do you want really? مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَرْسَ الْآخِرَةِ نَجِدْ لَهُ فِي حَرْسِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَرْسَ الدُّنْيَا نُوتِهِ مِنْهَا فَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ نَصِيب Crucial question is you are after this world or that world? If you are after this world, that world, hereafter, 
You have to use this world to earn that hereafter. But if this becomes an end in itself, then you are doomed. اعلموا انما الحياه الدنيا لعب ولهو وسيله وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الاموال والاولاد let it be known to you that the life of this world is nothing but a play an amusement an adornment a boasting among yourselves and a rivalry in abundance of riches and children ilamu anna al hayat al dunya laib wa lahum wa zinat wa tafakhur bainakum wa takasur fi al amwal wal aulad these are the five stages of human life early childhood life is nothing but play innocent play when you are in the teenager stage now there is not only play innocent play amusement and sensual gratification that come and also adornment i must have very good dress my hair very beautifully cut i should have the the clothings of the the fashion of that time tafakhurum bainakum and then at a stage when you are nearing 30 now boasting i have more wealth i have more power i have a better car and finally you are you are past the age of 40 then nothing except more and more wealth and more and more children this thing children this has stopped now in this world but before you know in that time because they were the source of strength the person who had more sons he was more strong more respectable but you know now this alhaq umut takasur is only for riches 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 kama sali raisin the similitude is that of rain aaj abal kufara nabatuhu rain and the resulting vegetation that pleases the husbandman fatarahu summa yahiju fatarahu musfaran summa yakunu hutama and then it crumbles to see it turning yellow then it becomes chaff or straw this is you know a life cycle the land was lying dead rain fell now there is vegetation maybe grass or some crop but then after some time this becomes yellow and then you know it becomes chaff or straws and nothing else so this is a few months and human life cycle is the same a new child is born then he grows up he reaches his maturity strong then you know the decline then grey hair then dead and buried in the grave this is a cycle of 30 40 60 70 years and this is a few months wa fil akhirati azabun shadid wa maghfirat min allah wa rizwan but in the hereafter one of the two ends are essential either ah azabun shadid a very severe chastisement wa maghfiratun min allah wa rizwan and the other forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa taala and his pleasure now choose where you want to go if you have decided that you desire this world then this severe punishment in the hereafter if you decide here that you want the other world and allah then there will be forgiveness and the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa taala wa mal hayatu dunya illa mataa al ghurur and this life of this world is nothing but a comfort of illusion when it's 
ऑफ्रेक्स योर विजन ऑफ दी आखरा दिस दुनिया If it is obsessed your vision of Akhirah, then it is ghurur, it is dhoka, it's fareeb, it's dajjal, it's dajjal. This dunya is dajjal, actually. The intensity of this dunya will increase and increase and increase, reaching that level of dajjal. But our ghurur, this is illusion. But if you believe in Akhirah, you aim at Akhirah, you use this to earn Akhirah, you saw here to reap in the akhirah then this world this life is very important very precious each minute in each second of it barakallahu li wa lakum fil quran al azim wa nafa'ni wa iyyakum bil ayati wa sirkil haqi allahu akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, iman in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations. first on themselves their families inform their friends and then to invite the non-muslims to islam the ultimate goal is to seek allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter for more information about iona please visit us at www.tanzim.us you may also email us at info@tanzeem.us at or call our toll free number 866-779-IONA join us together we can make a difference